How's it going Grant fans? King Blacktooth here with a deck highlight for you. So this is very similar to the one that I did about my own deck, but someone else made this deck and I'm going to highlight it. So we're going to look at what cards he's placed, why he's placed them, what is the deck win strategy, what combos work well together, strengths and weaknesses, stuff like that. And then we're going to go on to the draw test where we draw some cards and see if there's any consistency issues that might arise or any sort of lack of redraw potential, you know, problems that could arise from drawing cards, whether you get optimal in your hand and such. So the deck is the Squirtel deck and it was made by Schiffer of the Cards and is named That Which Endures for obvious reasons we'll come on to in a second. So here we are in the Gwent database with That Which Endures deck created by Schiffer of the Cards and he's chosen to take the Bruva Hoog leader card. Now if you're creating a Squirtel deck, Bruva Hoog is probably one of the only viable ones to choose at the moment. Aethne, who transforms all loyal cards with the swap ability into Dolbothlana Archers. We don't quite know what that means yet. We haven't seen anything with the swap ability. The only thing that has swap ability is a decoy so far. Now, I'm wondering whether they mean Agile, because in Old Witcher 3, Agile was something that uh, was utilized by leader cards like Aethne. Um, however, it could also mean that any decoys you played could get turned into Dolbothlana Archers, which is really interesting. But for now, since we don't know what it does, Bruverhoog is the only real leader card of choice. And he allows you to pull one character card out of your deck and play it instantly, which is really good. And we'll come on to that later. So this is the deck. As you can see, it's majoritarily based around the melee row. It does have quite a few things on the ranged row, however. But most of these things can be shifted between uh, different rows. They've got an agile ability. Now, there are some things placed onto the siege row, but really there's nothing on the siege row because Zoltan the Brawler, he is a, is a siege person, but he can't be removed or changed in any way, so it's really like he's not even there. And these have Carlin healers can be placed on ranged or siege. So really... You'll place them on the range so that they can benefit from motivates or mushrooms and stuff like that from these guys. Okay, so really fully melee and then a bit of ranged and no siege in this particular deck. Now that means I've got an inherent weakness to biting frost um, and possibly some impenetrable fogs. This deck is mainly based around consistent board pressure and presence. So you will be placing a lot of cards down on turn one and then hopefully the strength will carry over to turn two and to turn three so you'll consistently pressure them with constant reasonable strength now the strength of this deck is not going to be massively massively high you're not going to be able to compete with some of the combos of which northern realms can do but hopefully you can deal with them and you know so scorch them from the board or weather them down or something like that rather than actually trying to beat their strength and you've got a couple of things I think the opponent will easily be able to see when you're playing this deck. This is the deck which the opponent will be able to notice that you're playing and, and try and think around that quite early on. As soon as you start playing Mahakam and Guards and probably Blue Mountain Commandos or Dolbluff Lana Marksman, they're going to know quite what you're going to go for really. Um, so the, uh, the special cards are probably the area which is a bit more unknown. The character cards like Sarah and stuff and Zoltan and such like that. They're going to be the ones that the opponents are unsure about and are going to have to try and guess. And they're your trump cards basically in this deck. So now we're going to look at the deck and see what kind of combos are enabled depending on what cards Shifu of the cards put into the deck. He is quite an active person on the forums and the Discord server so I feel like he knows what he's doing in terms of building the deck and what, he's, what his uh, thought process is. So first off, we have Blue Mountain Commandos. These are probably going to be quite standard in most Squirtel decks. And the same for Dolbluff Line and Marksman. They do the same thing. They muster onto the field, and when they go into the graveyard, you can medic one out or play another one, and they will muster from the graveyard as well. So you can use them on turn two and three as well, which is good. And that's probably where these have Car and Healers are going to come in handy. They're going to be your primary uh, reason to use these, probably, is to get these... Um, Blue Mountain and Dolbluff Lana back onto the board. Although you do want to save some for in case someone gets scorched. The next thing we've got is Jade Golems. He's put in two Jade Golems. And the reason for this is you place it down and then it's Death Wish. It splits into two, two strength minions. So basically you get to keep the four strength on the board. And they're all melee orientated. So it's going to work really well 
uh, when they split into two lesser golems with the Vreehead Vanguard, who will encourage add plus two to everyone on the melee row because they can be placed on melee and range, which is really useful. So they're going to work in tandem with the Vreehead Vanguard, and obviously Vreehead Vanguard are going to work with everything on the board, which is, which is really nice because there's nothing in Siege and they can't be placed on Siege, so they're going to work with everything, which is really good. Right, the most obvious card that lets the opponent know you're playing this type of deck is the Mahakaman Guards. Six strength melee. Now, there are three melee ones here, but we've seen one that is Siege, so I think there's two Siege, no, two melee and one Siege. So that could be good or it could be bad, depending on how you feel about it. But uh, they're 6 strength and they will stay on the board because they've got the resilient ability between rounds. So you place them on turn 1 and then when turn 2 comes around they'll stay on the board for turn 2 and they'll stay on the board for turn 3. So I've always stated though, if they go into the graveyard they don't come back out. It's not a death wish. I, I firmly believe that so I feel like... They are scorchable and dangerous if you get into that sort of situation. So you do have to protect them in some way if possible. And um, yeah, so they're going to be really good to place early on and to push through all the rounds. And that's kind of what you're going for. Again, one is Siege. So um, you won't be able to buff them all up. So we do have one Siege then because I think this is a little wrong. I don't think you'd be able to have three melee ones. Um, which means obviously their damage is split a little bit. You won't be able to buff up all of them at the same time but maybe you could buff up the siege and protect the melee ones or maybe you could buff up the melee ones and it'll protect the siege one you know you've got some choices at least we've got a dandelion that is for uh, buffing up everything on the melee row which is very useful now in terms of commander's horns versus mushrooms because we've got both in the deck commander's horns work at four or higher strength effective and mushrooms work at four or lower strength effectiveness so, Commander's Horns at the moment, only really good for Mahakam and Guards. Mushrooms would work with everything else. Even these Zero Strengths would get Mushrooms. Whereas uh, they wouldn't get Commander's Horns. So, at the moment, it's looking like Commander's Horns are not as effective as the Mushrooms. So, we do have two of them, so I may have taken them out. Now, one thing that is interesting that I really want to check, actually... Is this Vreehead Vanguards. Okay, they have the Encourage ability. Now, we've stated that the order of operations for uh, abilities and buffing and nerfing and all that kind of stuff is that it's Weather Glyphs, so stuff that nerfs you first. And then it's abilities, like your Bonds, your Encourage, and stuff like that. And then it's the Promotional Glyphs, so... These will be your Commander's Horns, your Mushrooms. Mushrooms, we know, definitely goes on at the end of everything. You can't take down the Mushroom Strength. They go on at the end. So, you could theoretically place a Vreehead Vanguard on the melee row. Get like those to 5 Strength, get those to 6, get those to 8. And then Commander's Horn them. And then that would become really effective then. Um, because then they would double the effectiveness of these encouraged so instead of getting two they effectively gain four which is really good and you can obviously stack these vanguards together now where the commander's horns obviously is good for stacking up and get high strength the mushrooms are a lot more effective defensively so they're going to protect a little bit against weather effects which is always good because that's going to be something you're going to have to deal with you do have a couple of clear weathers and a couple of ways to get through weather effects as well but I, I feel like maybe some of these might they might be spreading yourself too thin. You might want to take out a Commander's Horn for consistency, possibly. Because you do have Dandelion as well. We'll go on to that later. Right, we have Sheldon Skaggs. He's going to be a very vital character card for anyone who's running a Mahakam and Guard deck. Because he plays a Mahakam and Guard from your deck. So if you get a bad hand and Mahakam and Guards are just not appearing, you can play Sheldon Skaggs and uh, he will play... A Mahakam and Guard. So by playing Sheldon Skaggs, you get a Mahakam and Guard. That's effectively 10 strength. And if you don't get Sheldon Skaggs, you can use your leader card to pull out a character card. So you could use your leader card, pull out Sheldon Skaggs, who pulls out a Mahakam and Guard. Really nice. And even if you've got like, the worst hand possible and you've got none, because they're pretty vital, I would say, to this whole, whole deck, you could decoy uh, Sheldon Skaggs and play him again to get another one. Um, is always a possibility, which is really nice. And you can medic out Dandelion for future rounds, which might be quite important as well. 
We've got Siri Blink, one of the hero options that he's chosen. This is really good if you plan on losing a round because it returns to your hand if you lose a round. Obviously, you can only lose one round, so it's only going to give you like basically 20 strength maximum and 10 strength minimum. But it does just give them a little bit higher on one that you're planning to lose. It makes the opponent have to play a little bit more in order to beat you. And that's going to be really effective when we go over these spies later because he's placed in five spies. So that's going to be really effective with those. So we've seen the healers and we've seen the Doldoff line and marksmen. These are ranged things. Three head vanguard we've spoke about already. Really effective because they can work on pretty much any row apart from that one Mahakam guard on the siege. He's chosen to put Sarah in, which is really useful. I think it's a clear weather, which is kind of a vital thing. We're not getting too much higher strength. You see, I think mostly those will be 12 strength. So we don't have to worry about Scorch too much. Um, but weather effects we do have to worry about. And she can be decoyed and repeatedly played or medicked out and repeatedly played. So that's really, really useful to have her in. And we've got Zoltan the Brawner finally. He's a siege unit, resilient. So there's no way to get rid of that six strength. So that's six guaranteed strength for you. It's pretty low. But don't forget, this deck is all about just consistent pressure. And we'll have to see how that kind of works out. Because if you're an opponent and you see this deck being played, you're not going to place a couple of cards on every round. You're going to basically focus on one round, win it, and then, you know, maybe play your Spies second round, lose it, and then buffer everything into the third round. It's probably what you're going to do. So you have to see how effective that is. So in terms of special cards, we've got a bit of everything. Two decoys, two commander's horns, two scorches, two clear weathers, two mushrooms. So I'm thinking that maybe that's spread a little thin. I'm thinking maybe take a commander's horn out, possibly. Um, mushroom, maybe take one of those out. I'm not sure. Uh, we do need to buff the strength in order to give it a bit of a challenge. So maybe you don't take them all out. Uh, we'll see it with the, with the draw uh, test later on, whether, whether we get an overabundance of special cards or not. And finally, he's put in quite a lot of spies here. So he's put in Ithleen Aigley, probably not how you pronounce it. She allows you to draw one special card from your deck to your hand, and you give the opponent four strength. So these are all disloyal. They'll all go on your opponent's side of the board. And that is 12, 22, 30, 38, 42 strength you're giving the opponent. So that is a that is crazy amount. That is a very high amount of strength. So... She's very useful, though. In one way, I feel like you should be placing all your spies on one turn that you definitely want to lose. Um, however, you can place all these Mahakaman guards down and like stuff like that and then still play all these and still lose it because they'll still be here for the next round. So that's not too big of an issue. Obviously, you've got to be careful they don't get scorched because then that's really devastating to you. So in one way, I feel like you should play all your spies and then use all your cards in later rounds however she's definitely a card that you want to hold back until you get you need a special card of choice really so you might, might want to keep her back operator pulls a random hero card from your deck really nice now it says when removed discard can you see that yeah when removed discard so i really feel like this means when he's removed from the board it banishes him so they can't be medicked out because no other card says when removed discard and obviously, when you remove it, you'll discard it to the graveyard. So I really feel like that means he's too powerful. He gets banished when he's finished. But he can pull out either one of these two spies, Siri Blink or Zoltan the Brawler, which is very nice. And you could probably um, make sure you get one, depending on how many cards you've got in your hand. If you've got three heroes in your hand already, then you want to make sure you play him first because you don't want to risk drawing two cards with this guy and getting a hero that effectively makes him useless so depending on how many heroes you got in your hand either play him very early or you can wait up to you now here's a card that you don't want to play early either so this whole idea of playing all your spies early is kind of falling apart a little bit because he can take care of himself you want to see what row your opponent is getting putting most of their stuff down before you play him he minuses two from everyone on the row that he's on. So you're giving him eight strength, but you can effectively negate that pretty easily. And uh, you also draw a card, which is nice. So you probably want to save him until he's useful, until you want to win a round. He's probably quite good. 
Right, Avalak, the Sage. These are ones which I never thought I'd see anyone put in because they're, they're, they're a bit odd, to be honest. A lot of strength you're giving the opponent. So this one, you draw two cards to your, from your deck to your hand, but the opponent draws one card from their deck to their hand. So this one is a dangerous one. If you get this one, theoretically, you want to play it as early as possible. Try and get the opponent to get a duplicate muster, for example. But you've got to worry about that yourself. You've got Dolbluff Lana Marksman and Blue Mountain Commandos. They're the only two things that you really need to get rid of before you play this guy. You can get rid of those. And if say if you're playing a monster against a monster deck, um, it's going to be really effective to play this as early as possible because if they get a Foglet, that's a wasted card because they come onto the board whenever uh, Fog is in play. If they get an Ancient Foglet as a duplicate, then that's a wasted card. If they get a Crone as a duplicate, then that's a wasted card. So really effective against certain decks to try and get them a duplicate card to negate the whole idea of giving them one card but you've got to be careful you don't get a duplicate um one of these gels yourself okay and finally avalak mysterious elf you draw two cards one goes to your hand and one goes to the graveyard you want to play that definitely after you've um you don't want to put a hero into your graveyard is effectively the only problem with that so, obviously, you don't want to get duplicates, so you obviously play these first. But make sure that you've probably not going to get a hero first. You've used your operator first. Make sure that's a, a thing that happens. But that is going to be really hard to decide how to use all those spies, in my opinion. So, one of the weaknesses this deck seems to have that I've noticed is that there's no way to protect your Mahakam and Guards from being scorched. Okay, so, you've got no, no cards that are higher than 6 strength, that is not a hero. Okay? Because heroes get bypassed anyway, so these don't count. You do have uh, the Operator, and you do have Yavin. The problem is that they go on the opponent's side of the board. It would still protect. Um, so if you place the Operator, then it would protect the Scorch. But the thing is, on the round transition, when it goes to round 2, he will get removed from the board, but they will stay. And so then you're in a situation, if it's your turn to go first, you've got nothing to protect them with. If it's the opponent's turn, they can scorch them all. So that might be one of the biggest issues. You could put one Mahakaman Guard because one is Siege, put them on the Siege and then double that to 12, and that would protect the, the other two. But uh, it seems like a bit of a waste. And that's kind of probably one of the biggest weaknesses here, is that they're very vital to your overall strength, but that there's no way of, of protecting them from Scorch. Um, apart from placing down Operator on turn 1, and then Yavin on turn 2, the only way you could do it. Or you just have to hope that the opponent plays stronger, stronger cards, so you don't have to worry about Scorch. Which might be possible, because uh, a lot of cards are higher than 6 strength, and the opponent's deck might be based around getting high strength numbers. But uh, like I said, on the, on the round transition, they're, you're, they're completely vulnerable. They're, they're the only things on the board and they're six strength and it's going to be deadly. So now we're going to go into the draw test and hopefully this will help us decide on how to use all these spies. We're going to see if there's any, any draw issues, like do we get too many of certain cards. It looks fine. It looks like there's only four cards that we don't really want. Possibly these four. You know, any duplicates of these. Maybe if we get too many special cards, we'll get rid of them. But for the most part, it seems like it's going to be fine. But we want to see what kind of strength we can build up to as well. And what is the optimal hand and stuff like that. Okay, so this program is called Cockatrice. It allows you to put any sort of images in as cards and do whatever you want with them. It's a way of playing certain card games uh, without actually playing them properly. But um, the official Gwent people have asked that you don't use this to play real Gwent matches, uh, well, new Gwent matches, which is fair enough. I'm hoping they will allow me to do this card draw test because effectively it's just random number generators um, spiced up a little bit with some pictures. You could probably do it on pen and paper anyway, so hopefully they're fine with that. So what we do is that we're going to start a local game, so I'm playing just by myself. We're going to load up the deck which that which endures, and here's all the cards that are in the deck. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, so they're all the cards. We've got the leader card in there, Bruva Hoog too. And what we're doing is we start in the game and we're effectively just pulling out the leader card. That's the first thing I'm going to have to do. Yeah. And then we draw 10 cards and, and redraw and then 
place and spies. We're basically emulating what the game is going to be like with the with the card draws and see what kind of issues we run against. So we've got a Vrihead Vanguard, he's pretty nice. Blue Mountain Commando, that's one, so that's fine. Decoy, Commander's Horn, Avalak. He's the one that draws two cards, one to my hand, one to the graveyard. Zoltan, Mahakam and Guard, Dolblosslan and Marksman, so no duplicates yet. Jay Golem and a Scorch, so uh, reasonable. I don't think I'm going to get rid of anything on there, to be honest. Um, Commander's Horns is good for Mahakam and Guard. Yeah, I think, I think that's fine. So, first thing, what would we do in a normal game here? First thing I would do is probably play Zoltan the Brawler, because there's nothing they can do about that. He's still... Uh, the board is effectively still clear. I'm 6 strength up, but they can't do anything, so it's effectively their play. Right, we have Avalak, Mysterious Elf. It draws two cards, one to the graveyard, one to my hand. So, there's not much risk at playing Blue Mountain Commandos. But I might as well play these first. There's no reason to play Avalak straight away. It doesn't have anything to do with the opponent. So, we'll, we'll draw these guys out. There's a quite a lot of cards that I didn't get. You know, I didn't get um, any have car and healers. Quite a few things that I didn't get here. So this might not be a great hand. I don't know. We'll play. So at this point, I might have played the Mahakam and Guard first to protect these guys. Um, and then once he's played, we we'll definitely play the Dolbofflan and Marksman. Play those next. There we go. So we've got no healers, so they're not actually going to be coming out on the next turn, unless we get one with Avalak, Mysterious Elf. Okay. So some of these turns could be taken up with decoys and spies. We could theoretically decoy up one uh, Dolbofflana Marksman. Reduce Nash Strength this turn, but it allows us to play it next turn and pull them out of the discard pile. Um, the graveyard, which is nice. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no reason not to play Jay Golem as well, probably. And, uh, yeah, so, theoretically, this is the time where I play my Spy, so we draw one to my hand, which is Mushrooms, and one to the Graveyard, which is Jay Golem. So, not too great, I wish I had a healer. And, um, yeah, so the next turn would happen, all these would go into the Graveyard, he would stay on the board. We get two lesser golems with him. Uh, I don't have that at the minute. I didn't put the tokens in. Uh, but yeah, I place her again and they come out of the graveyard once again. Like that. And you know, we didn't have too many cards. We can buff them up. We've still got the leader card. That allows us to draw one character card out. So the character cards we've got, Dandelion, could be useful. Operator. Uh, so effectively, this leader card can pull out the operator, which is the character card, who pulls out a, who pulls out a hero. So Brew the Hoog is an excellent way of sort of going round the houses a little bit to get a hero you want, because normally you can't draw heroes, but if you've got the operator, you can sort of chain the operator to get a hero randomly though. And the same with Sarah as well. So if you need a clear, a clear weather, you can lose your yeast. Uh, yeah. If you need a clear weather, you can use your leader card to pull out Sarah as well, which is nice. So he's very versatile, really. Um, let's pull out Yavin, a spy, and we'll, we'll, we'll play him and see what happens. So we get to pull one card out. Yeah, another Vanguard there. And then if we Commander's Horn, that's going to be reasonable strength. Let me just calculate it. So that's going to be 8, 10. So that's going to be 20 strength. Like that, and then this is going to be 5, 7, so 7, 14, 21, double that is 42. I've, mis I've miscounted now, <laughs> doesn't matter. But yeah, you get the point, there's reasonable strength there, but I have nothing. I've basically used all my cards in two turns, it was pretty quick. But in turn 3, I'd still have, you know, uh, not much at all really, to be honest with you, I'd have like, 6 strength or so, uh, 12 strength. I do have mushrooms though, but a scorch. So that was an interesting one. Let's do another one and see if our card draws any better. Right, so pull our leader card out. 
Or ten cards. Okay, we've got Ithli Aigli. Really nice for any type of clear sky. So I might get rid of that clear skies just because I know I've got her who could pull it out later anyway. Possibly. Mahakam and Guard is good. Dollar Bluff Line and Marksman. Siri Blink. We've got a duplicate there. We'll have to get rid of that. And we've got another duplicate. Oh boy, right. So let's get rid of those two first. There we go. So we've got Sheldon and Skags. Really nice. So effectively, we have three Mahakam and Guard ready to play with Sheldon and Skags. Uh, I've got one more redraw. And I have a, a Vanguard. I don't have any Blue Mountain Commando, so I might get rid of um, Jay Golem. Actually, let's get rid of the Clear Skies. I don't know if this is a good choice. You might play a bit differently, but I know I can get a Clear Skies later if I need it. Let's draw something else. Avalak, Mysterious Elf. Very nice. Okay, so first thing I would do is I'm going to draw two cards. If a Dol Bofflana goes into the graveyard, then that's not a problem, because it gets mustered out anyway. So, let's start with Avalak, and we'll draw two cards. A decoy and a Clear Skies. Okay. Um, so, at this point, I, I might consider losing this round. So, don't place anything down that's going to get disappeared from the board on round transition. So, you place your Mahakam and Guard down. Okay. You... And don't forget, they're playing cards as well. So you are wasting their, their cards a bit as well. You might place your Jay Golem down. That might be a thing, because you'll still split into some more. You can decoy it. Don't forget, if they're playing Spies, you might choose to decoy it as well. One of the questions is, do I place another one? Because then they're Scorchable. So at this point, I would... Um, I'm not sure if I'd put another Mahakam and Guard down, but let's, let's just put down some stuff. We've... We've got a, so we put some of these down. And we just, let's just check how much strength we can get in this particular one. So we, we don't get any Blue Mountain Commanders, which is unfortunate. So that's going to be a little bit of a waste. Uh, we've got another Mahakam and Guard there. We've got Sheldon Skaggs, who's going to put down another Mahakam and Guard for my deck. Oh, there they are. Okay, so reasonable. We don't have any... Buffing things. Okay, so at this point, I've just noticed we don't have any Commander's Horns and Mushrooms. So I guess we use the leader card, and we'll have to pull out uh, Dandelion. And then we'll have to medic him out another turn as well to use him again. So we're getting reasonable strength on the board here. Uh, reasonable indeed. If we put him down, the Vreehead Vanguard, he will basically give plus four, because it's plus two doubled to all units, which is really nice. So the strength on the board at the moment is, they are eight, aren't they? So on the melee row, we've got eight, 16, 4. Uh, doubled that to 48. So we've got reasonable strength on the board here. There's just 48 strength now. Um, Jay Golem, let me put on here. So this is going to be six strength. Double to 12 at the moment. We've got, they're going to be double the 5, 10, 15 strength, double to 30. And Sheldon Skaggs is going to be 6, double to 12. Boy, and he's going to be double to 8. And add 1 for the, uh, actually, add 3 for Dandelion because he's getting buffed by that. So, Okay, so we've got a reasonable amount of strength on the board. Actually, surprising amount. Let me just... I'm just going to get a calculator here. Right, so... 48, add 12, add 30, add 12, add 11. There we go. So 113 strength on the board there. And when the round ends, this would get split into two lesser golems, so we'll keep that. These would go into the graveyard. Now, I could have decoyed one up. Uh, might have been the best play to do that. If I'd have decoyed one into my hand, then I can play it again, because I'm going to use that healer to get Dandelion out, which is very important. Um, Sheldon Skaggs would go, and Freehead Vanguard would go as well. 
So at this point, I would place Dolbuff, Lana, Marksman again. So we're going to have to pull all these guys out again. Um, then we'll use the healer. We'll put him on the range row because that's the only thing we can do. And we've got Dandelion back in. I should have put him into the graveyard. And yeah, at this point, hmm, you, maybe we would have used her in round two to sort of make them play a bit more. But that was really nice. We'll do a final one because these are taking a, quite a long time to do. So we'll play one more game. <laughs> we won't play a game at all. But uh, we'll do one more test. See how we do. Where's Bruva Hoog? There he is. Okay, draw 10 cards. Okay, clear skies, blue mountain commando, have Chiron Healer, Dandelion, Double Flana, Freehead Vanguard, Zoltan Scorch, Double Flana du Duplicate. So we'll get rid of her. Now I'm hoping it works like Hearthstone, where you can like select some cards to get rid of rather than double clicking them and doing them one at a time. Um, just because it's easier, it's nicer. I've made some errors in Witcher 3 based upon that. And I also hope you can see all the cards on the on the screen at the same time so you don't have to scroll around because you might forget what you've got and it's harder. So draw a card. Mahakam and Guard, very nice. That's the point. I don't have many Mahakam and Guard. So I've got two redraws. Maybe I want to... I've got Clear Skies and a Sarah. I don't have any decoys. I have one healer. So let's get rid of the Clear Skies. And maybe I'll be able to utilize Sarah twice. Is my thought. I want some else. Right, that's really bad. There's my second redraw. Let's do my third one. Scorch. Okay, so maybe I could win this by doing multiple scorches and really just decimating them. Because um, hopefully they've used several cards to get a big combo and then you scorch them down. First play would probably be Zoltan the Brawler. I noticed I didn't get any spies. Uh, we could pull a spy out with Bruva Hoog. In fact, is he the only one we could do? No, we could do an Operator or we could do Yavin. Um, okay, so there's that. I'll put down a Mahakaman Guard as well. Because then it would defend all the Blue Mountain Commandos and such. Oops. And Dolbuff Lana will pull her out to play her next. Like that. We've got the Free Head Vanguard, which is really nice. That will buff up a lot. Uh, let's use Bruva Hoog to pull out a Spy and see what we see what other cards we get. Now, yeah, don't just necessarily use it like I did. Oh, I'll just do it. It's hard to do because I can't see what the opponent's playing, so I can't react at all. But you may want to pull out Isli Aigli to pull out a special card if needed later. Uh, but or we could do Yavin. Yavin's pretty good. Or you could do Operator. We do have Avalak the Sage and Avalak Mysterious Elf. We have Siri Blink. So um, you could pull out Yavin minus some strength and get one card. Or you could pull out the Operator and then pull out another one and get a different amount. But you are giving them more strength by doing that. So it's probably just better to pull out straight Yavin and do that. Draw one card. And we've got a Commander's Horn. That's going to be very useful. So we'll place him down there. And that's probably going to be that turn for the most part. So all of these will disappear on turn two. Okay, so like that. And then I guess we would have car and healer. Uh, what would you do? You'd probably do Dolboff. No, we'd do Blue Mountain Commandos because they're melee. And that'll bring all three out, which is nice. Um, commanders horn them. Uh, yeah, we've got Sarah as well. She's four strength and clear weather later on and stuff. So, reasonable. Uh, we did get quite a lot of strength, but I think it's hard to sustain that over two rounds. Um, there might be, obviously, my spies, it's hard to see. But they're going to be very difficult to, uh, to play properly play efficiently because you are giving them a lot of strength and it's very hard with the types of spies that we've been given Yavin and Ithili Aigli um, it's very hard to get those all played at once because you want to keep those back um, that's really good so I think this deck is decent so 
I think this deck is decent, but uh, I got the feeling it won't be the overall powerhouse. We have seen Canby and Hemdell. They've been rumoured to wipe the board of any non-heroes on a, on, a, on a round transition, which is absolutely deadly for any resilient people. Now, if they manage to scorch these Mahakaman guards, which, like I said, have no protection whatsoever from anything in the deck, apart from what the opponent plays, or maybe if you play one of these spies... If they manage to scorch those, you're probably screwed. I didn't seem to get enough healers in order to, you know, pull out these guys. I only just barely had enough healers to maybe pull out one Blue Mountain Commando. Um, I'm not sure if the opponent would feel the stress of three rounds of moderate strength. Um, because moderate strength, they're not going to place little bits on all rounds. If they want to lose a round, they'll place their spies then, and then just pass, you know? Um, it's hard to analyse now, obviously, because we haven't played the game. But I'm feeling like this is not going to be one of the higher top-tier decks, just because there's a, a weakness that is, is um, evident. Like A lot of your stuff kind of relies that the opponent don't scorch, or it's hard to scorch. Um, tell me what you think. I mean, I may be completely wrong. Uh, I'm not as scared as this deck as I used to be with the resilient. But uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, and I will see you again shortly. See you guys.